And just like that, we are back. Welcome to the show. I'm Yanni Rude. And I'm just Terrell. You ever been out somewhere and overheard two people having crazy conversations? Well, we are those people. And we've been having these conversations since college. Yep, it's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast. Love is Blind, Season 3, recap of Episodes 5, 6, and 7. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Hey, you know, before we get started in um, this week's uh, recap, num- number two of four that we're doing uh, for season three, um, I was traveling this past weekend, right? Went down to Charleston, South Carolina for less than 24 hour turnaround to go do this uh, party for. Remember Misty, the best damn instructor? Uh, you yep. met her at Jerkfest? Zumba instructor, yep. Yep. So she had she held this pink um, breast cancer awareness uh, Halloween party, and so went to went to go DJ that um, blast. Man, had a blast there. So you know, I'm definitely looking forward to having Misty back at, at Jerkfest next year. But on the way there, as I'm flying out of Atlanta, um, get to the gate, you know, scan the boarding pass, and the gate att- gate agent looks down and goes, "Yanni, I listen to the podcast." I was like, you know what? That's pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you for listening. So big ups to everybody who's listening to the podcast, watching the podcast, but especially to you. And for the life of me, I'm hitting a brain fart and cannot think of her name right now. I'm like, son of a, you know, I, I guarantee you, as soon as we start recording, it's going to come right back. <laughs> that's, well, that's awesome. Did, did you get an upgrade? <laughs> you know what? She actually did come on the plane. <laughs> had me a ticket. So, you know, hey, kudos. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, and again, thank you for listening. I'm hoping that we have some Southwest uh, flight attendants that follow the show because I tend to fly Southwest all the time. So I'd love to get a drink coupon. That's all I want. Just They've all coupon. upgraded from Southwest to Delta. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah, we did that. We didn't want to do that sing song shit the whole goddamn time. <laughs> every, every time we get on the plane, we got to sing a nursery rhyme to to make people you know, sing and dance. And <laughs> they have fun on Southwest. They have fun. If that's, that's what you want to call it, if that's what you want to call that's it, that's what I call sure. it. That's what I call it. <laughs> well, a lot of fun watching episodes five, six, and seven. All right, so let's kick things off first with Nancy and Bartis. The thing I have right here. Um, cause we pick up right after that first meeting, right? Right. And it felt like, so the next morning, Nancy goes on the offensive. Um, cause remember Barty said, and this is how they ended the first episode, um, <clears throat> that he's got feelings for two women, which meaning both Nancy and mm-hmm. Raven. So she goes and says, you know, I'm disappointed. She was even on your list. She puts that right on him. And I'm like, you know what? That's actually pretty smooth. No, Nancy was going to just go straight messy. Because <laughs> what she did was, I'm, I'm I'm really disappointed that she was on your list. Because did you know that <laughs> yes. Raven does this? Did you know, I heard Raven has, I heard Raven does this. You know, when she farts, it smells like, like she was just trying to throw shade oh, yeah. at Raven to get him not interested. And so I was just like, okay, Nancy's going to be the messy one uh, out the group. And I, and I got more on that, too, when she had a conversation with SK. Mm-hmm. You know, Nancy's just messy, but did you see how much pizza that was between two people? Because we were talking about Bartise is all about being fit. Mm-hmm. Nancy, I don't think so much, even mm-hmm. though on her Insta, you know, she shows some stuff, which everybody shows on Insta that they work out. But do they really live a lifestyle? <laughs> looking at that's a lot of pizza for two people. <laughs> and I know that was just for the show, but I'm just looking at this I'm like, that's a lot. <laughs> two people. <laughs> One of the things I noticed when they're having this conversation uh, um, around Raven is that Bartiz is really smooth when he doesn't have the liquor in him, right? Because yeah. when he explained to Nancy why he chose her over Raven, even I was like, you know, maybe he is right. But we watched him in in, 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 in action. He was chasing after Raven, you know what? Because um, the way he was with her at that first get-together, you see that, you know, he does kind of want her. And then we see them at the pool party. And what happens at the pool party? <sighs> he goes in. And what does she do? She just blows him off. Generally yep. not interested, not impressed with his flirting. And I applaud her for not buying into the bullshit. And her saying, yeah, he, we're not compatible, though. He tried his damnedest. He shot his shot. All of it. Oh, he sure did. He sure did shoot his shot. And while he's shooting his shot, Nancy's talking to SK about the fact that uh, 
about their intimacy, about Raven not being intimate and all uh-huh. this other stuff. I think she's just trying to be messy just to shoot everything about Nancy down. But Bartice tried. Mm-hmm. And I like the fact that Raven shot him down. I still don't trust Raven. Mm-hmm. I think there's something about her that's just not genuine about being on the show. But she, her whole body language is he's saying the stuff. She's like, uh-huh. Uh, yeah, but you know what we have in common? We go work out together. Yes. And that would be it. I love that. You know, after we get done working out, what do we have? Yes. <laughs> and so I'm wondering, is that why she seems so uninterested in the pods? Where he's trying to talk and she's just working out, just like, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Just doing jumping jacks and stuff. You know, and that, you could be right. That could be it. Because they never really talked about anything of substance when they were in there. But then I think she's still that woman scorned in the sense of like, because remember, he tried to break up with her first. And then she's like, yeah, well, it's going to be a no for me. <laughs> and, and so she shifted that narrative. And now she holds the power because now he's seen her and he's like, yo, yeah, I had no idea. I knew you were hot, but I didn't know you were hot. And she's just like, yeah, I get that all the time. <laughs> people going to come. He's like, yeah, if we went out, people would come to you. People, we probably wouldn't even. And she's like, yeah, well, you know, you're kind of to yourself. I'm kind of to myself. We'd probably never meet. No, I would have come up to you. He was so thirsty, yeah. thirsty. You thirsty yeah. son of a <laughs> <laughs> thirsty son of a bitch. Um, <clears throat> so after they after the the pool deal, mm-hmm. Nancy and Bartiste are talking. <laughs> oh Jesus! And this jackass. I made this in quotes. He's scared the love will fizzle out. Yes. Like all this, like, I've been in love before, but every time it just kind of fizzles out. I'm like, why would you say that out loud? <laughs> To someone, because all she's saying is so. What you're telling me is you love me, mm. but this is gonna fizzle out. Like, and she, he was asking. So, like, right now, we had to get married today. What'd your answer be? She's like, yes, and yes. He's like, I'm all in. Really? Yeah. He was just like, word. <laughs> <laughs> you're suppo- I thought what I said about falling out of love would make you say no, so I could go chase Raven. Raven. <laughs> but I'll be goddamn. You're still gonna. Okay. You know. All right. Oh, well, we got to figure something else out. Because basically, in that same conversation, I made that exact same note, but, you know, like, he told her she ain't shit. And then proceeds to ask, so what do you think about Raven and SK? You think they're going to make it? <laughs> like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> um, he, he is not a smart man. We get it. At, He's not. At all. Oh, by the way, I just want to point out. They were wearing shoes in the house when they got to the new spot. But not only that, they decided to wear them in the bed, too. Did you notice that? No, because I'm not petty. <laughs> I, I didn't notice that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's bizarre. So when, when they were, Nancy was showing him the, the, the house that she's, they're working on. Yeah. Um. That was very interesting because I'm like, Nancy has her financial shit together. Like, she's on it. And for her to be, what, 31, mm-hmm. Nate's 25. You know, all this is new to her. But when she said that my business partner, he was like, "Who? oh, who's that? Oh, like her ex-husband. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think it was ex-husband, ex-husband or ex-boyfriend. Just, ex- I think just Yeah, ex. her ex. Yeah. But she has all these problems with her ex. I was just like, what? But they have two. Right. But regardless, like, Nancy seemed like there was nothing in her... No skeletons in her closet. Right. As in the pots. And so now I'm just like, wait a minute. So you had these properties with your ex-husband or ex-boyfriend. He's okay. financially in your life. Interesting. But she didn't tell Bartise that in the pots. Did she just said that's them? my realtor. Did he? Okay. Now, okay. Stop now, it. Now, okay. What? <laughs> Stop it. That is that is some bullshit. Do I got to ask? Who, my realtor, have you had sexual relations with your realtor? I did not oh, have sexual okay. relations. Yes. We may love. <laughs> now, no, okay. The fact that she said a realtor, yes. Is, but you know what? The explanations in the pods probably... The, guys are too fragilely jealous. Okay? Let's be honest. Not fragilely jealous. It's just, is there, <laughs> is there potential... That this other person that's going to be in your life that I'm going to have to deal with, is there an issue there? 
has they moved have they moved on because you know I've, I've dated people that are divorced mm-hmm. but the husband still wants them back yeah and so that's going to be a part of the problem in their relationship okay that you got to deal with this dude now if they're totally amicably separated and they just have this business together may i just need to understand that okay but here's my point on this though it's property okay they have it they're renting it out for what you say six to nine thousand dollars or something like that i mean a month there's a lot of money to be made on that right and he had a problem until she said we have two hundred thousand or we have three hundred thousand all of a sudden he was like you know what I totally get why you're still in, in business with this guy. That's a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know him. <laughs> well, because I think Bartiz was realizing that I don't have my fancy financial order set up like hers. No. I'm behind. And a lot of the stuff he doesn't think about because at 25, to your point, it's youth. You're thinking, wait a minute, you have this property mm-hmm. with this ex-husband or this ex-boyfriend. What does this mean? He's not thinking about, hey, this is money. Yeah, it's not about this relationship. This is income that comes in. And so when she said that, you know, if I have two hundred thousand dollars a year, we have two hundred thousand dollars a year. He was just like, Cha-ching. <laughs> no, he he went to that that slave mentality. Oh, we sick? Because <laughs> you know what? They can sell the property, but they make this right. one lump sum and that's it, and they split that. But if we're right. in business, then okay, fine. And and as somebody who is in who has had over the years good relationships with exes, I totally get that. I'm like, yeah, I'm never stepping down that lane again. Um, and they they feel the same way. It's okay as long as you have that understanding. And that may be what they have. That's why I see no issue in her still being in business with them. Now, just call him a realtor. <laughs> you might want to point out the fact that yeah, so my realtor, my ex. At yeah, least at no least let's get honest. that out the way. But you know what? She knew how to curve from that and go, yeah, but we have $200,000. Yeah. Then he goes to meet um, her dad, right? Because we find out about her financial savvy a little bit later. But when she goes to meet the dad and the brothers, what was your thought? Because I thought the brothers were trying their damnness to be hard. And you realize I had a hard time not laughing. <laughs> so I, I didn't think the brothers were trying to be hard. I, I respected what the brothers were trying to do. Mm-hmm. And I like how the... I feel like their attitude was like, I don't care how big and tall you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could probably physically whip both our asses, but we're not running from you, and we're mm-hmm. not intimidated by that. So I respected it. And so they, he takes the the brothers. The brothers take him outside. Mm-hmm. When he comes to meet the family, it just to me, it just seems fake. He that's you know? because he's extra loud, <laughs> right? But I've met I've met a lot of people's families. I've dated. It's just I don't come across like oh well, hey, like I'm just like I'm on, yeah. right? I'm just like trying to be genuine. He that seems like it. he's trying to be on. He was on. That's exactly yeah. it. <laughs> he seems he's trying to be on. I was just like, what's your deal? Just chill out. Yeah. And so when the brothers took him outside and they're talking to him, I feel like uh, they had him a little bit rattled because listen to his answers. He sounded like he was full of shit. So the youngest brother was because he gave an answer and the youngest brother was going to be like, yeah, okay. That's, that's a salesman's yeah. answer. <laughs> that's a car salesman. Used car salesman's answer. Yeah, totally, totally did. And the other brother was like, yeah, you know, I'm I'm younger than Nancy, but I'm older than you. So <laughs> <laughs> in other words, it's like I've been around and heard bullshit a little bit longer than you have. Right. So just shoot me straight. And I, and I really think they got him a little bit rattled. Mm-hmm. Uh, but his answers, I thought, were, were crap. Mm-hmm. It really it really was. Um, and I think the person that he realized he couldn't bullshit a lot was her mom. Because Nancy's yeah. mama does not play at all. I loved her mom. Because her mom was like, yeah, we don't believe in debt. We, and if she's in this mindset and she taught her daughter this. She taught them how to, here's what we're going to do. Here's how you do this. And she was like, yeah, he's like, I've got 50000 She's like, yeah, but we don't do debt. So um, <laughs> yeah, if we don't have cash, we don't pay for it. <laughs> Which I'm like, mad respect. Mm-hmm. I totally get it. Uh, now, the conversation that... Nancy and Bartiz had around kids. Yes. Okay, I'm looking at Nancy. I'm like, did you just say out of your mouth on live TV that if the kid was going to be born with special needs or whatever, you would abort it? Okay, so here's what she said, right? And and, and what she, and what she said, she's like, knowing what it is and having dealt in this space, right? And she had to explain this over and over again, especially. Um, not just in that conversation with him, but also with his family later on. 
But what she was saying, and I don't think she was saying, like, if, if it's eight, eight and a half months, we find out the child's going to have special needs. All right, abort, abort. I <laughs> think she's saying more so within time. But she did say it on national TV. But did you hear what he said? Because he was fine with an abortion if it was a mistake. Right? If you get the, you get a pass on the first one if you didn't mean to get pregnant. But if we were trying to get pregnant and the child has special needs, then or, uh, no, we don't abort. That's kind of double edged. He's like, yeah, if you no. if if because that's what he said. You you can mess up one time. No. But what he was saying was because they're they're trying to go. It, it was leading into the do you agree with abortion? Yeah. Or not issue. Mm-hmm. And his point was like, look, she said, what about rape? What about this? He was like, look, I. Different circumstances, obviously. But then he was saying, like, somebody had, oops, I got pregnant, got an abortion. He goes, I get you one time. And I would agree with that. Now, that's, second that's, time. That's, that's not because of medical. That's just because, oh, I didn't no, no, to get, I get pregnant. It. I'm all for I'm, I'm I am pro-choice. And so if you choose to have an abortion, because you, first time, you know what? I'm not in a good place. This is one night stand. Financially, I can't mm-hmm. take care of a baby. You want to get an abortion for whatever reason? Great. His point is, okay, you get pregnant again. Okay, you know how pregnancy works and how mm-hmm. it happens. Okay, you got to own some of this shit is what he was saying. But to say out loud that if you knew the kid was going to have special needs problems, you would abort it. To me, that's just hurtful to say to folks. Now, keep in mind, people would have that feeling. Let's just be honest. That's, that's some people choice, would have though. that feeling. Mr. Pro Choice, that's that a choice. Public TV, national TV, you don't say that. Yeah, but he just, like, what are you saying? Well, because here's the deal. What, what he said was worse. Know, but <laughs> what she doesn't know is, is anyone in his family have special needs? Because mm. I thought that when she met his family, I'm thinking maybe his sister mm. has a special needs kid. Mm-hmm. And that's why his sister got so emotional mm-hmm. when that conversation came up. And so I'm just like, what if the sister had a kid that was special needs? And you're mm. saying this. That's going to hurt. Okay. Again, I go back to the initial conversation on it, which is what he said was way worse. She has a reason. Here's the only reason I'm looking at if that I would do this. He goes, well, shit, if it's the first time, fuck it. Let it go. You know, <laughs> kill the first baby. It's okay. <laughs> kill the first unborn. The rest of them you got to keep. That's what he was saying. And, 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 and it, the one thing I think he probably thought. After that conversation was, all right, so how many abortions has Nancy had? <laughs> she was probably thinking like she has one every other month. Um, but I like the fact that they were on different sides, but willing to listen to each other um, and not talk down to each other in, in that conversation. Uh, you know, because it wasn't a matter of trying to pull each other down or change each other's mind. I thought the initial conversation about it, opposite sides, let's have this convo. All right, we agree to disagree, but and then we'll cross this bridge when we get there. If we get there, we'll see. We'll, we'll see if they if they work. But mm-hmm. th- they had an interesting uh, few episodes. <laughs> they did, but it's you know the thing about them, especially um, when you look at um, them having that conversation. It's it's a reason why religion and politics. They say, oh, never bring that up on a date or this place or that place. I'm like, yeah, but you have to. If you're talking yeah. about seriously dating somebody, you gotta have these these conversations because. You may think everything's cool, then all of a sudden you're far right, she's far left, and the two of you just can't get along because you don't know how to leave that there. They had this conversation that's going to affect both of them um, and seemed to get past it. Now, we'll see as this whole thing moves along how that really happens. All right, so as we switch to Zenob and Cole, f- figure this out. As soon as we finished recording last week, we figured out Zenob is Zenob? the way. Yeah, even though um, Cole initially pronounced it as Zenab, and then, because uh, that's why she's like, yeah, I like the way you pronounce my name. <laughs> and then he started calling her Zay for short. Um, after seeing this, uh, it was interesting when they got out there. Because, you know, he goes, he asked her, like, after seeing all the guys, did you have any second thoughts? Um, almost think that he could have found a better way to ask that question. Like, never ask a question. And guys, keep this in mind. Never ask a question that you're not prepared to answer yourself. Because he wasn't prepared <laughs> for Zenob to ask him that same question in response, even though he was very honest. No, he wasn't. And I don't think Zenob was really falling for anybody else in the pot. Right. At least they didn't show it. So there, I don't think there's anyone that... 
got matched up they're seeing a regular basis that Zenob had any interest or attraction to. Mm. Um, but Cole is he's just not smart. <laughs> and let me let me preface this by That's saying great he's not it. smart. <laughs> it's not that he's not intelligent. I'm not right. saying that. It's just common sense smart. <laughs> Common not sense is not stupid. common He's for just everybody. <laughs> yeah. Common sense is not common for everybody. So Cole said that, you know, Colleen was happy with Matt. When 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 Zenob asked him, is there anybody that he's not or you know, he's has any and, second, and second uh, thoughts, yeah. Second thoughts on. So he brings up Colleen. He's like, Colleen, you know, was happy with Matt, but he didn't say he was disappointed he didn't choose her. That's what Zenob was wanting is to hear that, hey, you know what? This, this person, this person, but I'm so happy I'm with you. He okay. missed that cue. To that point, because because he said Raven was too much, Alexa wasn't yeah. his type, and Colleen was happily with Matt. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, the way like, he said it, you're like, dude, take your foot out of your mouth, man. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, of course, you know, Zena picked up on that, and she's really trying to poke the bear to find that, hey, do you like Colleen or not? Yeah. That's where she's going down the path. And she asked him about being a nine, you know, uh, looks-wise, like, out of tens. <laughs> and so Cole tells her that she's a nine out of ten. Yeah. He goes, yeah, there are a couple tens. Alexa's a ten. And Colleen. Not Alexa. No, he definitely didn't say Alexa. Not Alexa. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Raven. Mm -hmm. Raven's a ten. And uh, Colleen's a 10. And, mm -hmm. of course, Colleen is who he would normally go after. Yeah. But it's like you're really poking the bear with, with Zena because I think she has her self-esteem issues. She does. And I think that she will never be Colleen's size. Mm -hmm. And for her, that's her issue. And I think Cole doesn't like the fact that Zena has a little extra cushion. It's, look, it's not like Zena is fat. She's no. far from it. She's far from being overweight. So I, maybe maybe I'm looking at this on a small screen. Maybe, maybe I need to start looking at it on my iPad, looking at it on my, on my big screen TV, because apparently y'all are seeing some stuff that I'm not. Because Zenob is not, one, unattractive, or no. two, big. Colleen is extremely small for a reason. She's a ballet dancer. She's dancing around. She's ex Look, she can eat 5,000 calories a day and still be fine. Because Okay, maybe 5,000 is a stretch. But still, <laughs> she can eat a lot and still get away with it because she's expending a lot of energy, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. At the same time, Zenob is still being a killjoy. How are you at the pool, right? And this, this is, I can see that getting on. Because Cole likes to go out, have fun, jump in the pool. Hey. And he's like, just come on in the pool. No, it took me so long to get this fit together. That's a killjoy. And so I, I can almost understand why he was like, Ugh. and But for him to go and play up to Colleen the way he did all the time, I thought it was just a little, it was a little much. It's a little messy, mm -hmm. but... Zenob is not Cole's normal physical type. Right. And one of the benefits of this show is that, you know, love is blind. You're trying to like connect with somebody more so than just the physical and the looks. But the thing is, is that Cole, it's not Cole's issue. I think it's Zenob's issue. No, I'll tell you why that's wrong. He at the pool party was telling everybody that would listen. He's not physically attracted to... He, he, he's telling all the women he's not physically attracted to Zenob. And then he kind of makes his move on Colleen. We can say he didn't, but he did. The way he approached her, he still kind of made a move. It's just that she shot him now. Had she said something, he'd have been, hey, well, let's sneak off by the pool a little later. But the fact that he's telling all the other women who are hanging out with Zenob and are going to hang out yeah, with her again, yeah. he's telling them he's not physically attracted Yo, if that's the case, keep it to yourself. Keep it close to the heart, but do not do that. To, do not do that to her. Are you kidding me? I did make that note that he needs to stop telling everyone that Zenob is not his normal type. Mm -hmm. He has to stop doing that. But also, Zenob has to feel good about herself. Yes. No matter who she's with, whether it's Cole or any other dude, mm -hmm. you got to feel sexy about yourself. You can't depend on that guy to make you feel you're hot. Zenob is freaking gorgeous. All the women that, that have been picked, let's just be honest. All of them are gorgeous in some form or fashion. But Zenob has to feel good about herself and not depend on Cole to make her feel good about that. Well, she depends on the makeup to make her feel good, right? And here's the thing that Cole said. I made a, and well, she, does, she said it. She, when she put the makeup on, ah, there, I feel better. Now, 
he's telling her the whole time, you're beautiful without it, right? Which she is. She's beautiful without it. But he, so he said he's not head over heels um, with her. He has a thing for the natural. He made it a point to say that again. That wasn't the first time he said it. He said it again, which is the same thing that I was talking about all along. You try to make an issue out of it in the live chat um, for Married at First Sight and talking about, um, I don't like a lot of makeup and, you know, show us where the clown touched you. Look, <laughs> who, the, who the hell wants a clown? Nobody wants a clown next to them. Nobody. And if you do, you probably don't like the person underneath the makeup. That's what the problem is, right? <laughs> Cole doesn't like the, all that makeup. I don't like all the makeup. You, I know you, you don't like all the makeup. And Zenob definitely doesn't need all that makeup. I, I don't mind the makeup. Zenob is beautiful with you and without the makeup. You don't like it. Stop it. Stop it. Don't mind it. Gosh. Don't mind it at all. <laughs> don't mind it at all. Uh, but but you don't want to let them nail your to, pillow with all that makeup. I don't mind. Whatever. Lie. I can wash the pillowcase. It's fine. I, I know you too well, but go ahead. If I wake up and there's makeup on my <laughs> pillow, I think I had a good night. That's, I'll take that as an awesome. <laughs> Uh, somehow I knew that was coming. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that's not a bad evening. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> now, do I see her whole face in there? Because was it face down, ass up? <laughs> I, I'd rather I'd rather be makeup on my pillow instead of sad tissues on my pillow. <laughs> tears on my pillow. <laughs> that's not tears. That's what I'm talking about. I know uh, what you mean. <laughs> so my note um, around Cole is that a you never tell your girl that you're a nine out of ten. And what's funny is. He was making it seem like I gave you a nine. Yeah, I give majority of all women a seven or six. You yeah. got a nine. Are there some tens? Yes. Now, what Cole is saying logically mm -hmm. makes sense. You just don't say it out loud ever okay. to your partner. And I, I know he's younger, but at what point do you stop rating women on a scale of one to ten? I mean, seriously, because you. You're a grown ass man. Stop. It's it's like keeping a. Well, I've got. I know exactly how many women I've slept because I've keep. I'm keeping a list. No, you throw that shit away when you get out of high school. Okay, you don't keep that shit going. Just like rating women like this, you got to stop it. Stop. Yeah. It. Well, when they um, when they moved into the when they went into the 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 move from one space to the other space. Yeah. And I can tell. Zenob is very neat. Now, there's nothing about Cole to me that says Cole is neat. Oh, we saw that. He's always just been, yeah, just kind of whatever. And so she's just nitpicking him about throwing clothes and stuff. Is uh, that nitpicking, though? It, well, it's not nitpicking, but in a way it is. If I walk in your house and just drop my jacket in the middle of the floor, what are you going to do? I'm going to tell you take your shoes off in my house. <laughs> no, you won't because you're like, keep your shoes on in my care. house. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if somebody were dropping shit all over the house, you would be, you'd have a problem I'd pick your jacket up and throw it at you. And just be like, <laughs> hey, you dropped this. <laughs> I'd be petty about it. <laughs> and she wasn't petty. She just got like, hey, we just walked in here. It's a brand new place. It's, well, not brand new, but at least it's clean. Let's not mess it up immediately. And, and, and let's be honest. You're uh, like, I know I can be messy. Sometimes yeah. you got to be reminded of stuff like that because when you're in your own space, you drop it and you keep moving. Well, you're no longer in a space by yourself, so you have to be aware of the people around them. So, you know, unfortunate that Cole's parents aren't all in on what he's doing, which I don't understand because it's you signed up to do the show. Did you tell your parents, hey, tomorrow I'm going here mm -hmm. and I'm going to go whatever? And they have no idea. But for his parents to not really want to be engaged in this and want to, yeah. maybe they don't want to be on TV. They don't want to be interviewed. That could be it. I don't but know. I thought that was just weird. It seems like more than that, though, because he even said, I even told them you don't have to be on camera. And apparently they're still not down for it. Uh, I, I think here's the part, because he said it's they don't believe in the living together before marriage. I'm like, what do they think? He's still a virgin. This is, you know, stop it. Um, but same thing you said. If you notice how they feel, why would you bring your ass on the show knowing this is what you're going to have to deal with? But I get it. You're on your own. You're gro you're growing as a man. You got to step out on your own. It doesn't matter. You're no longer in your parents' house. And if and right. if they choose this, and, and so I thought about why would you bring your ass on the show in the first place? But then I'm like, as a young man and you're growing up, you got to step into your own. 
And you can't just keep doing what your parents say or what they want and to please them. It's about pleasing you. So if this is what you want to do, then you do it. The thing about it, because he's he's got to stop putting his foot in his mouth. OK, because he said they love me so much. And I wrote this down to make sure I got the quote right. They love me so much and they're freaking out that I'm about to make a mistake. Do you know what you just said to that woman? You yep. are a mistake. That's what. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. That's 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 the cool way. Foot in mouth syndrome. <laughs> and then shove it further. <laughs> yes. On a high level. You know, so we don't get a chance to meet Cole's family, but we do get a chance to meet Zenob's yep. stepmom and uh, stepbrother. Half brother. Stepbrother. Stepbrother. Mm-hmm. Now, I think Zenob's stepmom is pretty cool. She Minus is. the religious stuff, mm-hmm. but she's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I liked her. <laughs> hey, she was she but, was she was quick on the fly with that prayer though. She was <laughs> she was on it. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what's bad if mid conversation somebody just stops. It's like Lord Jesus, please. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm feeling like because the note that I made is like Cole is like a salesman telling Zeno's mom what she wants to hear. Yeah. And so I'm hoping she picked up on it. And she was just like, let us pray real quick, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Please don't make me smack this boy. <laughs> He's lying to me. <laughs> Lucky for him, uh, she didn't go, Cole, would you like to pick up halfway through this prayer? <laughs> yeah. You know, but I, I think I think his Zenob's mom is great. I think her her background is very interesting, right? And I can see why a lot of things are really important to her. And uh, it made him understand Zenob a lot more. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It made him understand Zenob a lot more about he has to watch what he says because right his words hurt her. He doesn't realize that he's doing it, Mm -hmm. but can we talk about his apartment? (laughs) What? It was messy as hell. Yeah. Like even if he's been gone, cause here's the thing. His apartment was fucked up and the producers are like, no, keep it like this. (laughs) Don't change anything. This is going to be great for the camera. It's like you had all opportunity to just clean that toilet before they Yo, showed a video of it. She said it doesn't smell in here. I don't believe her. I think she said that for saving grace because there's no way there's flies in the toilet and that shit doesn't. Yes. Stink. No, that <laughs> toilet, that toilet ring was just. But again, the producers are like, no, Cole, keep it like this. And he was like, OK, yeah. there's no way I'd embarrass myself. Hell no. Right. I'm just like, because to me, your your place represents you. Mm-hmm. It also represents how you were raised. So maybe that's also the reason why his parents didn't want to come on camera. Because they're like, nope, I don't want <laughs> yep. anybody to know this was us. <laughs> but that was just disgusting. It was disgusting. As we get to uh, Raven and SK, a.k.a. What is that? Velvet? <laughs> <laughs> I thought the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, is it me or do you think that Raven's conversation with Bartise at the pool made her appreciate SK more because you saw them just like she just really seemed to open up more to him after that and um, that's when they took theirs to the next level and SK should probably thank Bartise for that I think it was the chakra oil for the <laughs> massage that's what took them to the next level mm-hmm. he got a chance to rub on her a little bit with some oils mm-hmm. Then they go get in the pool, and that's when she got a little mm-hmm. more uh, open. So I think that massage helps with the physical chemistry. Mm-hmm. But even still, throughout all that, and when they were in the pool, to me, Raven's eyes and body language doesn't seem like she's really into him. Right. Yeah, when he was sitting there, I mean, she just came, she, just the way she would look. I don't know. I just, I'm looking at her body language, and it just doesn't seem like this is my guy, this is my dude. I'm happy. This is more like, this is my actor partner that I'm going to be on this show with. And we got to get through these lines. <laughs> she wasn't trying to get to a rush to kiss him. Like, cause you, you could see no. the moments that he was trying to, she'd look away. Then she'd look yeah. away. <laughs> yeah. I did catch that too. But here's yeah. the funny thing. The next day, SK says, I'm a gentleman. I'm not going to say what happened. Anytime anybody says that you've just told us what happened, you don't need to brag about it, bro. You were the last one to even get a kiss. I wouldn't even say anything happened because Raven said, wait till the wedding day to have sex. But but just because he said he's a gentleman, it doesn't mean they had sex. Now, she might have gave him a handy or something, or he might have gave himself one and she just cheered him on. (laughs) And for him, that was that was awesome because we've all been there. Right. Something's better than nothing. So. (laughs) 
Yo, when they when they met his family, <laughs> SK's brother could not keep his eyes off Raven at all, boy. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Look at this fire water over here. <laughs> What do you think about when she met his his family though, and especially when they sat down for the food? I thought it was cool. I I, I liked that she was actually in the kitchen, kind of helping with the mom because I think that's, I think cooking and and people cooking together, it, mm-hmm. it's a bonding moment. Yeah, it's not just a task. I think it's bonding, right? And in the restaurant industry, even though we we're cooking for other people, you bond in that moment of like having to cook and help each other. Mm-hmm. But I agree with. Raven, I'd be like, can I have a fork, please? Because I am not about to use my hands <laughs> to eat any of this. I'm sorry. I don't mean any offense. I need a fork. I can't lie. When I went to an Ethiopian uh, restaurant in, uh, in, um, in Richmond, yep, I'm going to bring me a fork, too. I'm, I'm going to eat that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, well, you just... I'm like, no, I'm not doing that with my hands. But luckily, it's not Middle Eastern because it's all in the same dish and everybody reached into the same dish and pulled from there. So you, you'd, you'd really have a problem there. <laughs> I, I I would totally have a problem with it. I'm like, I can't. This is just way too weird for me. I can't deal with it. What did you think when they were talking about finances, though? Um, especially when, because SK is like, hey, I'm in a pretty solid financial space. So, um, you know, I'm. we should be good. There's certain things we won't be able to do. But um, what do you want to do? Split bills 50-50? And then her, she was like, well, I feel like if as long as I'm married, you should be paying half my rent. So... I'm, I have some questions around, and I wish SK was here because I'd have some questions for him. Mm-hmm. Remember when we were at UTSA and probably in the college, you, you, there'd always be that one student mm-hmm. c- classified as non traditional, mm-hmm. and they're here from whatever country that I'm like, what, what are you doing? You're like 30 something. Like, what are you doing with yourself? Mm-hmm. And so I didn't understand, like, what is he's going, what's his plan? What's he going to school for? He's going to grad school. I understand that, but it's still. To go to grad school to live like a student, like for example, are you going to grad school to be a doctor and this is a residency mm. compared to you're going to grad school What's to it? get what, your he's master's? A, he's in, an engineer. Yeah, I'm just curious. Like, what's he, what's he going to grad school for that he can't work? Mm-hmm. And he has to live like a student. He can't work. So there's certain programs you can't work, right? I totally get it. I just yeah. want to know, like, what are you going to school for? Is it like, do I need to sacrifice? So in Raven's eyes, does she need to sacrifice for two years? Because as soon as he's done, he's going to blow up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, great. Now, if he's going to this grad program to be an English major yeah. and to teach high school, mm-hmm. well, that's a lose-lose. Yeah, so for her, I, I don't can see her concern. Go teach high school. Come well, on. I don't think so either. I'm just saying, like, Stop you know, what, I, this man's an she has to understand the, the financial long-term goal. Mm-hmm. But everything about her conversation, to me, is why SK should run and yes. not marry her. Because her mindset is he should be paying for the biggest, even when he's in California, (laughs) he should still be paying half her rent. And all of a sudden she wants to be taken care of in Mm -hmm. a way. And I'm just like, dude, SK run. She's not the kind of woman that's going to be in your, in your corner to get you through grad school that you can take care of later. The thing about it is if that didn't make him run, meaning her friends should have, because why is the first thing out of your mouth? This is probably your favorite friend of hers, you know, with the short haircut. Um, we all go to the same barber. Who uh, <laughs> was like, well, I thought you'd be taller and more athletic and better looking and have more money. And <laughs> I mean, she didn't get into all those extra things. But that's where she was going down the line. Like, yo, she she wasn't attracted to him. She was like, I just thought she'd be taller and more athletic. No, I thought her friend was stereotyping Nigerian men. <laughs> And, you know, Nigerian men are very controlling, whatever. I'm like, where yes. does this come from? Mm-hmm. That's a huge stereotype. Like, was she expecting, like, Wakanda forever to come walk into the house when he starts talking? It's like, that's not what he's about. There, it, he's, I think he is totally different than what traditional Nigerian culture is. And he's not expecting Raven yeah. to mirror that. Here's the thing about it. If it were you or I sitting in SKC, we probably would have said, well, I expected you to be, you know, head all rolling <laughs> as you ask your questions. <laughs> it's like, you know, I would tell you what I really think, but I'm scared that you're going to break out some Vaseline, put it all over your face, take your earrings off and be ready to fight. Oh, you, you pull your hair back. Oh, my bad. You can't pull your hair back. But at least you put... <laughs> 
Uh, okay, but here's the thing that really SK should be listening to about her friend. So they talked about him having to go to California mm-hmm. and all that. And her friend's word was, you're robbing my friend of a fairy tale. I wrote that how, too. How is that going to work? Is that fair? Yeah. Like, her friends are dumb. As hell. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe she said that. And then the real truth came out when they were off to the side doing the confessional um, because they told us the truth about Raven. She's for the streets. She's like, yeah. I don't see her being faithful. You're yep. talking about a woman that's about to go say yes. She's a fiance yep. about to be married. You go, yeah, I don't see her being faithful. I've never known her to be in a committed relationship. I don't see her being faithful. That trick is for the for the streets. That's what I. That's all I heard. Yeah, and they said their fear is that he's going to get his heart broken. Yes, <laughs> over her. Which I'm like, t- I can totally see that. I'm like, yeah. SK, look beyond the look beyond the physical, because he's just so infatuated with how gorgeous. Beyond the and Buddha. We've all been there. Yeah. We have somebody. We're just they're so attractive. I'm lucky to have this person, so I'm going to put up with all kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, SK needs to run. As fast as you can. Um, as we move on to Alexa and Brennan, um, on a scale of one to one eighth, we know that Brennan doesn't know math. I was like, what scale are you looking at? <laughs> yeah. She she said, well, I think you're six eighths. And he's like, oh, well, that's really good. I'm like, that's three quarters. Yeah. That's what she said. That's, he goes, that's more than half. Duh. <laughs> you think? Three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure a lot God. of the ladies are like, oh, Brandon, you're so cute when you don't talk. <laughs> because he's not smart. Here's the thing that really caught my attention. She goes, she asked if he's messy. Because somebody's got to be the clean one. Mm-hmm. Listen here, Chloe. <laughs> so I was curious how they're going to get along living together. But mm-hmm. what was very interesting about that first conversation they're having on the, the bench talking about that. That's when I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Alexa must come from money. Mm-hmm. Because A, she doesn't wear the same outfit twice. She wears yep. it once and throws it out. I'm like, okay. I've only known like bougie. I've never dated or known someone that personally does that. Right. Yeah. But there are people that do it that are on a whole new level of bougie that I can never get on. And so I'm like, she must come from money, you know, and Alexa was saying she doesn't want to have to worry about money mm-hmm. and doesn't really want to work, mm-hmm. but also wants a prenup. I was like, <laughs> when she said that, I'm like, money. Okay, she's got money. <laughs> she's, she's already got money. She just let you know that, hey, I don't plan to work. I got money, and you're not going to get any of it. I was, at at first, I was like, huh? Wait, what? And then I go, oh, she already got it. (laughs) Her bank account is fat, fat. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah. You know, no, so she's got money. So I think that's great. And I like Brendan's response to the prenup. He's like, yeah, that's fine. You know, if you want to do that, she's like, what would you want in the prenup? What would be your clauses? He goes, just love me. Yeah. I'm like, smart man. Because you got a situation that you got a beautiful woman Mm -hmm. who likes you, Mm -hmm. has seen and done more than you ever have, Mm -hmm. has had more than you will ever have. Mm -hmm. That's the woman you lock down and you you be faithful and you be in that relationship. And I'm like, Brennan, well played. And he's into her. So there you go. Totally. Yeah. Totally into her. Um, Now, what, what made me laugh is... Brennan saying that okay, we have kids. If they get in trouble, we're not going to take the doors off the the hinges. I was like, God, where'd that come from? And then apparently, when he was a kid, yeah, they kept taking the door off. I'm like, God damn, what was your childhood like? <laughs> okay, um, I was not surprised to hear that because uh, when I've heard those stories, they usually come from um, families that look like Brennan. Okay, and and the fact is because stay out of my room, mom. Clack him. <laughs> That's not happening. Not in my house. Not in my mama's house. That ain't never happening. You know, because there's no slamming doors. There's no locking the door. No, you in my house. <laughs> and that's what the, the door kept. That's what the daddy was like. Oh, oh, that's what we're doing? Zip, zip, zip. Give me that door. He said he went for months without that door, which tells you that he was, 
He wasn't this sweet, calm Brennan that you see now. He was a bad child. <laughs> That's what I got there's, out of There's him. more to that dude than, than meets the eye, but mm-hmm. uh, him growing up without any doors, I thought was funny. Now, when they go to meet Alexa's family, mm-hmm. Alexa's stepmom, wow. My first question, how old is Alexa's stepmom? How much older than Alexa is Alexa's stepmom? <laughs> yes. I, I mean, daddy don't like, look old. The only reason you know he's older is because he got the gray beard. But daddy's in good shape. He's, you know, they 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 stay in their in their in their bag. I mean, and like when he's like, you know, well, she has a an af, she had an affluent upbringing. I'm like, we know, we can see. He's like, this is the house. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you know, the family. Looking at the other guys in that family, like looking at Brennan, mm-hmm. the whole time it just seemed like they had that Randy from American Idol look. Like it's a no for me, dog. Until like, they just weren't feeling him <laughs> at all. Until <laughs> he started to look surprised when she said, "Oh, we bonded." When asked what his what his favorite thing to cook is, and you saw the look of surprise on her cousin's face, like really, I would not yeah. have expected that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and whatever that is, I have no idea what that that meal is. Mm-hmm. But at least they let their guard down a little bit with him. But I feel like the dad, when they had their one on one, the dad's just. I, I think the dad can read bullshit, and mm-hmm. I think the dad sees he's just genuine. Yeah, Southern gentleman. Mm-hmm. You know, but he's like, "Hey, don't be a pussy." <laughs> Pretty much, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I, early in that com- when they were still in the room with everybody, the dad was like, "Hey, we got to get rid of that ma'am on sir thing." But I get where Brennan's coming from, because I'm kind of guilty of that, too. Matter of fact, I'll do it to even people who are younger than me, because it's not about yep. age. Because, you know, that's what, it makes people feel old when you say ma'am and sir. But it's just, if, if you get in the habit of it, you say it. You say it, you know, and it just becomes one of those things. Um, from Texas, I say it all the time. That's just how I am with people. It's just how I was raised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is funny. You know, the, the thing, um, the pool party was this was in these episodes, right? Uh yes, I thought so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what is, yeah, I that's that. where everybody was spilling uh, the tea to Alexa because she has that face. Yeah, I, yo, here's the crazy thing about that too. She's like, oh yeah, we're the best couple, and we don't have any tea. But she gave everybody the tea on when they, her and uh, um, Brendan first got together. Like he just tried to jam it in. <laughs> what the? Hey, I no no judgment on my end. We've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> As we move on to Colleen and Matt, um, <sighs> thoughts. So at the very beginning, when they were, I don't know where they were, but kind of like by the lake and talking. And I'm like, wow, Matt just seems head over heels for Colleen. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't seem like she's the same. And Matt kept asking kind of these questions like, so what was it that made you feel this? And da, 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 da. almost like he needed confirmation. Matt is insecure. Matt is a, uh, right. He, he needed a lot of confirmation, he, and yes. understandably so from his last relationship. But the way he was asking, he's like, "Oh, that's so good. That's so good to hear." And all these positive things she was saying, like he needs that all the time. And I'm like, "That's going to be an issue." And then later we find out it yeah. is an issue. You know, here's the thing about it, but, but Matt. Is still having PTSD from his his marriage. He hasn't gotten over it, and he didn't deserve to be on this show, right? Um, did you notice when uh, Raven was like, "Oh, I didn't even realize that. I, didn't, I forgot that he was even there." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, he's making sure that's no longer the case. But here's the thing: I noticed Colleen was very honest in her journey in telling Matt, and I think maybe a little too honest, right? Because what's she saying? Mm-hmm. She's like, um, you know, yeah, uh, Cole rejected me, and Brendan rejected me. It's probably what sparked a lot of that insecurity in him, too. It probably fired up a lot more insecurity in him that he wasn't even aware of. Um, because he kept asking her about going back into the real world and other guys hitting on her. And I'm like, why are you asking this? And I right. think part of it, he has his PTSD left over, right? But at the same time, with her saying that Brennan rejected her and Cole rejected her, all he heard was, I wanted Brennan. I wanted Cole. Cole, 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 Cole. <laughs> <laughs> it, could, it could be negative 30 degrees. It's cold outside. Why you keep talking about him? 
<laughs> and I don't know about you, but do you ever believe a woman when she goes, you know, I've never done this or I'm never like this. Like how she said with her, I'm never like this. I've, I've never been. To... No. <laughs> this is my first time ever. No, no, I, I've never believed that. But but here's the deal, like for Colleen and to me, this is this whole blow up is on her. Why? Matt is Matt's at fault, too. No, Matt is mainly squarely at fault. At fault. Yeah, squarely at fault. But Colleen, like, okay, you dealing with a dude who has jealousy, trust issues, and you know that. Why are you giggling it up with Cole at the pool? You know he's looking at you. You know he's got an issue with it. And then why would you tell him that the way she worded it to him that, yeah, you know, in the real world, I would probably, you know, go out with you. Like, you know you're dealing with somebody who has trust he issues. Took why would you do that? That wrong. And look. Your insecurities are not my problem or my fault. Get over them. Grow the hell up, okay? And that's the problem. That's why Matt Matt needs to understand. We we realize this when we get to it later. But the thing about it is, Cole was hitting on Colleen. Colleen, hey, she was stiff arming him, giving him the Heisman the entire time, right? Yeah, she's not gonna be rude. She's gonna laugh here, yeah, because we had a moment. But you rejected me. I've moved on. Matt's blow up was crazy. And the one thing I would say with Colleen, have some self-respect. Leave his punk ass alone. When he walked out, don't say there and talk about, well, I'll do what I, yeah, I'll, I'll even go against what I feel just to um just to get him back. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. No. No, she shouldn't do that. But what I'm saying is there's certain things, again, why would you say anything? You know, if if you're out and about. You know, you, you've been you, you've been a personality for a long time. If somebody slides in your DMs and Yanni, you're so hot, you're not going to be like, "Hey, honey, look at this." Yes. Somebody's trying to hit on me. I would. Like you know, you you know, well, y'all been together for a long time. This in this early stage of their relationship, you're not there we yet. We did it early. The foundation. Now. I'm just saying, their foundation is not <laughs> stable. So, and you you know, you're not dealing with someone that has these serious trust issues that yeah. Matt has, mm -hmm. and so there's a total difference. If she did, you wouldn't do that. But I, I do think Matt's jealousy is is huge, and Colleen has to be aware of that. But what Colleen needs to be more concerned about is how cold Matt can be. Mm -hmm. Because when he was angry, they're sitting there eating dinner, and he's just he's pissed, but he's just eating like nothing. Just that is some like serial that's, killer kind of shit. I was shit. about to that say that's some like, serial killer. <laughs> that's some Jeffrey Dahmer. Like you were crazy. He's just a, so yes. Yeah, so why didn't you just say this? Just, and then she breaks down crying. He's just saying, eh, well, keep eating this. Yeah, I got to finish go this kill her. first. Like, yeah, exactly. he's crazy. <laughs> I know where she is. I know where to find her. <laughs> yeah, that dude is just and crazy. The only thing I would say that she should have said, and the only thing she should have said differently is, if we met in the real world, real world before the pods, right? That one word, before, yep. would have changed everything. But here's the problem. That was understood. Because even when she said it, when she said it to Cole... I knew what she said, she meant. Cole knew what she meant. She knew what she meant. The only one was a serial killer, Matt, who didn't know. Because here it is, the next morning. And because, think about it. That night when he's like, I'm done. And he's talking to the producer like you. If your woman did this, I better. I'm like, Jesus Christ, calm it down. Then the next morning, he acted like it wasn't a big issue. And, you know, it wasn't as big an issue as we were making it out to be. No, no, no. You made it out like that. She didn't. Yeah. Yeah, Matt. Uh, Matt's a big problem, and I think alcohol plays a role into it. I think Matt's an angry drunk because when he when goes to the producer, get these, get these microphones off me, bro. Yeah, like, what would you do? What would you do? She said this. I'm like, do you hear yourself? <laughs> do you hear yourself? <laughs> right? He just seems freaking nuts. So, and then so the next day they're all good and yes. everything's fine. Everything's then fine. they go to go meet. They go to meet Matt's family. Mm -hmm. And did you notice like his brothers all have the same douchey sunglasses on yes. that Matt has? <laughs> I was just like, oh, you come from a long line of douchebags. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 in their genes. But I will say this. When Colleen was talking and she was kind of honestly, and honest to God, um, when someone says that over and over again, I don't believe him. <laughs> yeah. No, well, but we know uh, she's surface level. She's very surface level, and I think Matt's mom is concerned about Matt getting his heart broken because she knows that her son is Psycho. not over this ex <laughs> and whatever happened with that. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So there's there's a lot of issues there. But yeah, so I think Matt's mom is worried about Colleen hurting Matt. But I think Matt needs some serious therapy. Dude has some issues. Colleen needs to run. I know she's surface level, but she's going to find her underneath his surface. And she's already found out, but she's ignoring it. This is going to be a big problem. If they stay together, this is going to be a huge problem because he's a bully. Uh, yeah, it, it, He reminds me of that Jennifer Lopez movie. Oh, what? I can't hit you? I see that in his future. Yeah. Um, so the couples got together um, and even some old folks showed up. Actually, only two people. One, Andrew and um, what was her name? Miss I Can't Get On Top Again. Was it uh, uh, Sharita? Even though we Sharita. never we never really saw her after after she first walked up. Because first she walked up like, who the hell is she? And then, oh, that's who that is. But Vartis is a pure dick. Mm-hmm. Why was he trying to throw the fact that Ma- Nancy chose him over Andrew um, immediately? Like, so, so you propose. What happened? Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's being 25. <laughs> that, that is just youth and being 25. That's what that was. I thought that was so ridiculous. Like, Bartice, you know what happened. If I'm Andrew, I'd be like, well, I told her, um, you know, about my 12-inch cack. And she was like, I have to go for something small. I'm going to choose Bartice. <laughs> That would have been my response to him because that would have just made him feel insecure immediately. <laughs> yeah, well, if I was Andrew, I wouldn't have said that. I'd have said something more like, well, the more that Nancy got to know me, I think she realized that financially, um, from an experience standpoint, I have a lot more in my life than what she's used to. And so she figured to go with somebody who she could develop like a child <laughs> and like raise up compared to someone like me. And so I'm happy for you too. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Okay, so listen to what your response would have been and what mine would have been. Mine is mine is the my response. That your feels- response would have got a laugh. My response would have got me punched in the face. <laughs> but well, it's also more along the line it. of what Andrew, we probably both would have. <laughs> but the thing is that Andrew is more along the lines of what you said. He would have definitely done that. But, and you see that Bartice was really, that question was all based in insecurity because... She's sitting there talking to Andrew, and I mean, now she keeps looking at Andrew, looking at Andrew, looking at Andrew, because, oh, now she gets to see what he looks like, right? Um, but once they sit down, she's like, yeah, well, no, I still chose right. She, Because he almost tried to throw a couple hints, and she's like, yeah, no, 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 I'm good. I didn't choose you for a reason. Well, what's funny is Nancy told Andrew pretty much to his face that I don't think you're that smart. Yes, she did. And that's, that's why I, I knew you would like that part. <laughs> But Bartiz is dumbass is so jealous. He comes over. Hey, what's going on over here? What are you guys talking about? Do you have some? She's right. she's over here crying her eyes out to Andrew about you and your dumbass. Do I have something to worry about? Well, you guys uh, continue your conversation and. Uh... Well, and Bart, when Bartiz was flirting with Raven, not once mm-hmm. did Nancy go interrupt exactly or say anything. Again, youth, <laughs> stupidity. Yeah. <laughs> Young, dumb, and full of, you know. So this rectangle, it's not even a love triangle, it's a love rectangle, right? Colleen, Cole, Matt, and Zenob. Um When this whole thing gets blown, brought up again, Matt and Colleen talk about it. Um, Matt gets angry all over again. Um, and he brings it back up to Colleen and she's like, yo, we talked about it. We got past it. Move on. I mean, I agree with her. M- move on or move on. Exactly. Because Zena got all like remad. Yes. After she talked to Matt. Mm-hmm. And they were just kind of conspiring together, kind of heating each other up or gaslighting each they other. I'm sure like, why are y'all doing this? Let it go and move on. But that goes to Zenob's self-esteem issue mm-hmm. and Matt's insecurities. And why That's you see that why Cole got can. upset about it when Zenob came back to him. He's like, yo, really? We're, we already, we dealt with this in, in, was it Malibu? Or wherever the hell they were. Like, we already dealt with yeah. this. Why are we doing this again? And I get it. He goes, I think this was the best way for him to really kind of explain. He's like, look, I knew from your name, you didn't look like the women I normally did. You didn't look like a lily. I knew that. Your name is Zenob. I knew that. 
He's like, all I'm saying is, even though, again, he kept bringing up the physical, physical, physical. That's his biggest problem. He's, right. <laughs> she's making a bigger deal out of it, but he is not helping at all. But he also came out looking like the adult in this entire love rectangle, even when he sat down and talked to Matt, because Matt came over like he was ready to punch him in the face. Yeah. Uh, I thought they were going to scrap. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, and I think Matt could take Cole. Oh, hell yeah. Easy. Yeah, Matt could take Cole. But I'm glad that they talked it out. And Cole was like, look, dude, yeah, here's what we said, but there was nothing. Mm-hmm. And she did a great job. And you would have thought that that would put Matt at ease. Mm-hmm. And all it did is get him a little bit more triggered, especially <laughs> when Colleen decides not to come straight home and go to the club. Exactly. That and I like when he's getting all like in front of Bartise. Bartise is like, "Look, little dude, you need to calm your ass down." <laughs> he's, "What would you do?" Well, yeah. just typical like that angry short white boy syndrome that just ready to fight. I'm just like, dude, you need to calm the hell down. Wait till he finds out that she went to the club with Zenob and Cole, and they're back at the house, the three of them. <laughs> oh, a little menage a three don't you think it <laughs> that would that would really be something because you know yeah he was ready to leave and the thing that i noticed though bartice was so quick to jump up and go calm him down and stop him from leaving to walk away from his own conversation that he was having with um with, with nancy nancy because he kept bringing up this whole, I'm not attracted to you, but this, uh, these other things are what it is. And he kept bringing up that, how am I going to get over this? And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, yeah. how, how am I supposed to get over the fact that you're not fine as hell like Raven when this comes up and then the kids comes up and then this comes up and then you're sitting over there talking to Andrew, but I'm supposed to get over the fact that you're not fine as hell? <laughs> and then say by the bell. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, hold that like thought. Jesus. Hello? Thank you. Hello? What happened? <laughs> Where you at? I'm on my way. <laughs> oh, my God. This is bananas. Uh, uh, this is turning... Like, these three episodes had more in it than the first four. And as we can see, because it definitely took us a lot to get through these, the next couple episodes <laughs> is going to be interesting as well, too, man. But if this was Married at First Sight, it would take us eight weeks to get to this point. So kudos to, to Netflix and Love is Blind because you hurry up and get to the drama. Yeah. We ain't got time. We ain't got time to wait around for this. Yeah. We've seen seven hours of Love is Blind and look where we're at. <laughs> seven hours of Married at First Sight. They're still on the honeymoon. <laughs> you know what? I can't even be mad. You're absolutely Thank right. You. <laughs> so don't forget, we will be back um tomorrow as a matter of fact tuesday with our regular episode episode 107 um then friday because um we do have usually it'll be thursday that we do the uh married at first sight recap we'll be up friday because um we got a couple different things rolling around we got some meetings got to be in so we won't even to record on wednesday um uh, or thursdays we normally do so um, Friday, we'll we'll knock this out and we'll have it up for you guys. So appreciate you checking out all of them. And of course, right back here next Monday with Love is, Bi- Love is Blind, um, season three, recap number three of four. Whatever. How you keep that in your head, I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> I is smart. Yeah. I is handsome. I is intelligent. <laughs> I'm leaving that alone. I'm leaving that alone. I served it up there for you. Whatever, man. Hey, I'm Yanni Rude. <laughs> and I'm Just Terrell. <laughs> Make sure you follow us at Yanni Rude, at Just Terrell, and at RGRT Pod. Yeah, send us some of your random thoughts or some of the bullshit you find on the internet, and we'll talk about it on the show. It's the Regular Guys Random Thoughts Podcast. Cheers. Cheers. You know you really want to say something. <laughs> nope.